Welcome to this training. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about optimizing your microbiome for energy. And I'm super excited for today's training because today I basically get to talk about what I do. And you know, from a point of view from like, this is where I'm at right now. And I'm going to actually start out by sharing a little bit of my story, my background so that, you know, you understand where I come from, how I got to where I'm at, and how I started to basically incorporate all the different things that I'm going to be uh, talking about. And so for anyone that is brand new to the group and just barely now, um, you know, following me and you have no idea, you know, who I am, what I do, how I started teaching, um, you know, all of this health information, um, I guess I'll rewind back about almost eight years, about seven and a half years ago, um, I was dealing with a lot of health issues. Um, I was just gaining weight out of control. I was tired all the time. Um, I, I had a hard time falling asleep. I was surviving on three to four hours of sleep. I had brain fog and all of these things. And really like the one event that made me actually feel concerned for my health was when I was in a shower once and I was just lathering up my hair as normal and then I just felt this texture and I look down and I see hair all over my hands and then I look around and I see hair all over the bathtub like in the shower curtain and everything I'm like wow like this is not normal hair loss there's something wrong with me like there's something going on here and I gotta go figure out what it is <clears throat> and so I started doing my research and just like many of you um, I was told a variety of things that you may have heard. One of them was, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with you. Um, you know, it's all in your head. Um, I was told that I was gonna have to take hormones for the rest of my life. I was told that there was nothing that I could do about, you know, my situation. I was told that diet had nothing to do with what I was going through. And and that's where I started, okay? And, and understand one thing that back then, okay, the person that I was, my belief system, what I, thought of was very different than who I am today. And that thought basically started out with me back then. I didn't understand food. Okay. I had no idea what food was. I had no idea what food did to you. And I had no idea how to actually use food for health. And that's basically what I want to share with you today. And so my background at the time, um, I was teaching how to brew beer. So I am the author of this book, Brew Beer and Drink It, um, Better Home Brew Formula, How to Brew, How to Design and Brew Better Beers. And so I wrote this book back in 2000 and um, between 2010, and 2012, and basically teaching, you know, home brewers uh, specifically how to brew beer. So I was teaching the art of fermentation and and i had no idea at the time that when i wrote this book and when i was learning about um you know yeast and fermentation bacteria and all these things i had no idea that what i was really learning was gut health okay but my epiphany came when i started to understand that 80 percent of your immune system is your gut flora and your gut flora is basically yeast and bacteria it's the same exact yeast and bacteria that you find in foods like yogurt. It's basically what makes things like sauerkraut, kimchi, um, you know, beer, of course, and all it, like all foods and beverages fermented that are, you know, consumable, they are all fermented by yeast and bacteria. And that yeast and bacteria, it's exactly the same yeast and bacteria that we have, we need in our guts. Okay. That's what our microbiome is. It's that same yeast and bacteria. And so my epiphany then came with the understanding that, hey, if I can grow yeast and bacteria while brewing beer, I can take the same concepts that I learn and apply them to myself so that I can restructure my gut flora because I started to understand that the yeast and bacteria that live in your gut are the same yeast and bacteria that digest food for you they make vitamins for you. They make hormones for you. <clears throat> they are your health. They are basically what allow you to grow. And so I want to share with you my perspective and the way that I perceive food, the way that I 
<clears throat> that I perceive health so that you understand why I do the things that I do. So let me start out by taking a sip of water because apparently my throat is a little raspy. <clears throat> All right, I'm good. So I want to start out by illustrating for you you know, one of my favorite concepts that really helped me understand not just our gut health, but really um, food in general. And I believe that when you understand food the way that I understand it, you're going to actually be able to make better decisions because I just see so many people eat foods that aren't good for you. And most people just have no idea why the foods that they're eating aren't good for them. And so that's basically what I am personally trying to teach through my, you know, beer diet project. And so the way that I want to start out is, you know, what I learned from brewing beer is that if you take a grain, okay, so this is what we used to, um, you know, this is what we used to brew beer, right? Grain, which was either barley or wheat. All grains have a shell and inside is basically what's called the endosperm. And I want you to pay attention to these words, right? Endo, you know, that word sounds familiar. It's kind of like the endocrine system, right? Endo is basically something that's coming from within. And then, you know, sperm, I think we all know what that word means. It's basically it's seed. It's basically what makes food fertile is if inside of the grain, if the endosperm, the endosperm has basically everything that you need for life. Okay, it has the bacteria, it has the nutrients, it has basically all the information encoded, like the DNA, like everything is in there. Okay, and the only thing that you need to be able to access the nutrients, right, to access what I call the information within is basically what we use to brew beer, which is water, minerals, we need the proper pH, we need the proper temperature, and we need the right bacteria or probiotics. So basically when we take this grain and we plant it into what I will call fertile soil, and fertile soil is really nothing more than soil that has the right amount and the right quality of these five ingredients, what happens is you add a little bit of water, you add, you know, you have some minerals, you have the right pH, you have the right temperature, the right bacteria. What happens is that this grain basically begins to first sprout. Okay, and sprouting is nothing more than all the nutrients that are inside of the grain, they begin to digest, right? And then it begins to sprout and it basically turns into a little plant. Okay, so <clears throat> follow this concept because understand that everything that lives, all living creatures follow the same exact growth and life creating process. So we have here a tree, right? This tree comes from a little seed, right? If, it's, if this is an apple tree, Guess what? The apple had a seed and that seed was basically what was planted and that sprouted into a tree. And where it sprouts from is basically the root system. And the root system is basically where 80% of the health of the tree lives. Just like in our bodies, right? We start out as a little seed, right? You're one of 500 million sperms that made it and you sprouted in the right environment with the proper amount of water, minerals, pH temperature, and the right probiotics, you sprouted out of the same, you know, fertile soil and your gut is just like the root system of a tree, right? So your gut, 80% of your immune system is your gut. This is where you got to have the right gut flora, the right probiotics. This is your microbiome. This is the bacteria that lives within you. So you got to understand that when something goes wrong in here, when something goes wrong at the root system, 
right? If you start to add herbicides, pesticides, right? The equivalent here will be if you add antibiotics. Okay, look, just listen to the word anti. Okay, biotics is kind of like probiotics. Okay, biotics means life. Pro means for life. Antibiotics means against life. Antibiotics kill bacteria and they wipe out everything. So you're essentially, you know, in each case here, you're basically wiping out all of the uh, gut flora. That's weakening of the immune system. Okay, and what happens when you don't have the right probiotics is you cannot digest food. And if you can't digest food, you can't get the right nutrients. If you have bad bacteria, okay, if you have food that cannot be on, that cannot be properly digested, that's the role of bad bacteria in your body. It's to break down what I will call dead flesh or dead food. Okay, dead food is eaten by bad bacteria. And the word bad bacteria here, I'm basically using as an umbrella word to include things like parasites, viruses, um, you know, bad bacteria. There's all kinds of different things, um, you know, that can live within us. But the role of it is to eat dead food. Okay, so start to understand these concepts. But because what begins to happen, what you begin to understand is that as you begin to lose health in your gut, in your root system, you begin to lose the ability to make things like vitamins, hormones. Now remember, this is why I share this stuff because I was told that I was gonna to have to take hormones for the rest of my life. And frankly, I don't believe that doctors should be able to tell someone that, hey, there's nothing you can do about X condition, whatever it is, okay? I believe what the real answer is that what they should say is, I'm sorry, but they didn't teach me that in school. I don't know how to help you. You're going to have to go out on your own and research. And that's exactly what I did. Okay, I took responsibility for my health. And I basically realized that my doctor's ability to help me had ended. And if I wanted to get better, I had to go research for myself. And this is basically what I found. And now I'm sharing this with you. But understand that if your gut flora if the root system of a tree loses this ability to produce vitamins, hormones, and other key nutrients, then those nutrients basically from the root, they get distributed all over the tree. And the role of that is to basically create what I will call fertile fruit. And fertile fruit is basically seed that is fertile. Okay, in the body it works the same way. So you have all these people that have gut related issues and what happens to them is they start to become infertile. Okay, they start to have um, you know, fertility problems. They start having you know, all these hormone issues. It's the same thing. And so again, all of this, I understand because you know, brewing beer, I had to understand that you know a grain sprouts and you know as a brewer what we would do is we would begin the sprouting process only to access the uh in the um the nutrients inside of the grain we will stop that um you know the sprouting process before it actually sprouted and that's what we call malt and malt is basically a grain that has all the enzymes and all the nutrients available and that's what we take and we turn it into beer and so fermentation is basically what happens when you eat food and you know what your gut bacteria does to that food which is creating vitamins and all these other nutrients and, and things like that all of that happens through that process of fermentation okay and so this is my understanding and this is basically the type of knowledge that i started to use in order to optimize my microbiome because i started to understand that everything that i eat Okay, everything that I eat is going to have an impact on your microbiome. Okay, everything that you eat. And so I want to give you a roadmap of you know what um you know what it looks like for me now. Um and, and I like to use the example of sauerkraut. Okay, sauerkraut 
is basically nothing more than cabbage. And then you can make it just using salt. Like you literally just add salt to cabbage. And so what happens is when you shred cabbage, okay, you chop it down into little pieces. When you put sea salt, okay, you have to use, and, and here's, here's where this knowledge really begins to help you because now you are going to start to understand what is good food and what is not good food. What is actually good for you? Why is it good for you? Okay, because the word salt, right, you can get, you know, sea salt, like Celtic sea salt is what I use. And Celtic sea salt has minerals. Most people, when they refer to salt, they're talking about a fine white powder that has been stripped and devoid of all minerals, but they think that it's good for them because it says that it has iodine. It has been iodized, right? And so people say, oh, I need my, I need my iodine, right? Especially if you have thyroid issues, you think that that's good for you, but it's not because it has been stripped of all minerals. And remember, the five things that we need to properly ferment, to properly digest is the right quality of water, minerals, pH, temperature, and the probiotics. So if you take cabbage, what you have to understand about cabbage, right? This is a cabbage. That cabbage has all the probiotics. And fermentation, what it does, it just basically brings them out. It wakes them up. It lets them grow and thrive. And the way that you do it, again, is you chop it down. You add some Celtic sea salt and the salt basically draws out the water that's already in the cabbage, right? So you have the water, you have the minerals and the salt, and then the probiotics, they begin to eat up all of the nutrients and begin to turn whatever nutrients are in the cabbage into vitamins and, you know, another key nutrients. And the probiotics begin to create a pH, you know, the environment that they need so that they thrive. And all of this happens as long as it's in the right temperature, which is basically room temperature to body temperature. And, and, and then it's no coincidence that, you know, these probiotics do well at body temperature, right? Because they're the same probiotics that live in our gut. Okay. So you can start to understand that, you know, ways that you can start to tell if this is good food or not is, you know, if your cabbage is organic, right, it's going to have the right probiotics in there. And if it's not organic, if it was exposed to herbicides, pesticides, or things like that, guess what? It's not going to have probiotics. So you're not going to be able to ferment it. You're not going to be able to make sauerkraut, not to mention that you're also ingesting those same exact herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, whatever it is that they use. And that is basically affecting your gut flora. Okay. So if you start to understand these things, you're going to start to make more sense of food and you're going to start to understand why is it that the foods that you're eating are basically making you feel the way that you are feeling. So I hope that that lesson made sense. And, and I wanted to use that lesson to really talk about um, what I had to do to optimize my microbiome. And, and again, I'm going to remind um, you know, remind everyone watching that I'm not a doctor, okay? I'm literally a brewer, and that's the only reason why I understand gut health is because gut health is nothing more than yeast and bacteria. All right, that's the only reason. And so, um, you know, this is one of the reasons why I don't talk about medication. I don't talk about um, other things. I don't make any claims as far as like, hey, this is how you, you know, like I don't, I'm not here to treat, cure, prevent any disease. All that I have done is basically learn how my body functions and I've learned how to feed my body properly so that it functions properly. Now, the problem, okay, and the problem that everyone that's watching this that wants to improve their gut health, if you have gut related issues, right? For me, it was autoimmune conditions. It was leaky gut. And the problem is that when you get to that point, basically what it means is that you have some sort of bad bacteria, you know, an overgrowth of a bad bacteria, whether it's yeast overgrowth, like yeast candida, yeast albicans, it could be a virus like the Epstein-Barr virus. It could be a bad bacteria like H. pylori, which basically reduces your stomach acid. I mean, there's a variety of things that can be going on with you. The problem is that once you have that overgrowth, once something colonizes, 
in order to get rid of it, okay, you have to go through an entire process. And this is a process that I've had to figure out because when I got this idea, when I understood what was really going on, when I heard that, hey, you probably have yeast overgrowth, my brewing mind basically came in and said, holy crap, if I were to have a wild yeast enter a batch of beer, it spoils the beer, it ruins the product, there's no way to fix it. What I do is I dump it out, which is a sad moment for every brewer, but you dump it out and then it's time to basically clean and sanitize the equipment and you can only clean and sanitize non-porous materials, whether it's glass, metal, anything that is non-porous, everything that's porous, it just goes out because it's so hard to clean all those little crevices. So like a wood spoon, you know, um, different things like that, plastics and stuff like that, all of that, it's so hard to clean and sanitize that we basically just get rid of it. And so as a brewer looking at my gut, I'm thinking, well, that's basically what I have. I'm looking at an autoimmune condition as a spoiled batch of beer. And I'm thinking, well, if, if I were to fix this, okay, if I had to fix this, you know, your gut is a porous material, so I can't throw it out. So how would I fix it if, if I had no other choice? Well, I basically started taking some of the things that I would do and realize, okay, well, number one, I have to empty out the equipment. I have to like get rid of as much and get to that surface area so that I can clean it and sanitize it. And so I started putting together different things and I started researching different practices and protocols. And this is where things started making sense. So for example, I realized that I needed to empty out my entire digestive tract. Okay, I needed to empty it out so that I can actually clean it. And so one of the first things that I started looking at was fasting. Okay, fasting, you stop putting food in, guess what? Your digestive tract is going to be empty. And by emptying out your digestive tract, that allows you to actually go in and clean and sanitize. Now, again, these are things that when I first started looking into this, I had never fasted before. I was terrified. I was terrified of fasting, but it made sense in my mind, right? It made sense that, hey, I, I have to do this, okay? And, and again, when I started, I didn't know everything that I know now. You know, I've gained experience and I now realize that you can't just jump into fasting right in the beginning because if your body is too toxic, chances are that your liver is toxic and your liver is probably not going to be able to handle the detox that comes from a full on fast. And so fasting is an aggressive detox uh, protocol. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, when people ask me like, Hey, how do you go about optimizing your microbiome and how, do, how does that actually help you get more energy? We'll understand that the cleaner your microbiome, the more likely it is that you're going to grow good bacteria and any kind of bad bacteria, the environment doesn't allow them to live because the only reason why bad bacteria exists in your gut is because it's toxic. It is dirty. It is gross to say the least. And so once you understand that concept, then when I understood that concept, I basically realized, you know what, I need to clean this. And, and I'm telling you, I've been doing this for about seven years now. Okay. And after seven years, I can still tell that there's a lot more to clean. And this is why I started to realize that this is really not ever going to end. It's, you know, cause I'm at a point really where my, my gut system is well balanced and it's good. And now I'm actually researching different things. But even as I research different things, I realize that, Hey, you're not going to get rid of all the bad bacteria. It's not going to happen. Like they have a role in your body. Bad bacteria plays a role in your gut microbiome. Like I said, they, their job is to basically come in when there is dead food, when there is dead cells, you know, for processes like autophagy, um, you know, these are, you know, more sort of, you know, that are saying like breaking down cells. So like whenever there's dead cells, that's basically where, you know, bad bacteria come in and they help clean up, right? That's basically part of what they do. Um, but basically what I've realized is that what, the only thing that I can do to really help my, my gut health is just every day, make it a goal to do something that will actually help me clean my gut that will actually help me grow probiotics, that will actually help me create an environment so that probiotics thrive and bad bacteria don't. 
Okay, and so things that I do is number one, fasting. Okay, and again, the reason for fasting is because I know that I need to empty out my digestive tract so that I can actually clean it. Okay, you cannot clean if you have built up gunk in your, you know, in your digestive tract. And this is where I've done, um, you know, different gut cleanses and other things, um, you know, like that. But again, before you do any of those cleanses, you got to pay attention to other things like your liver, you know, making sure that you're hydrated, making sure that your vitamin D levels are, are high, making sure that your mitochondria function is good, right? This is why I put together, you know, this energy jumpstart kit is because I understand that that's what I had to do. I had to strengthen myself first before I go do all of these detoxes. Right now, I'm going through a detox and, and, and I'm testing out different things. And one of the reasons why I'm not, um, you know, sharing too much about, about it is because what I'm doing is very advanced. Okay, and yesterday I did one that was like way too aggressive. Um, and, but you know what, but like I'm researching, I'm basically a guinea pig because I don't know of anyone else that understands this the way that I understand it. And so I feel this, this need, like this, ha this has become my life's purpose to understand the gut better than anyone else. And that's what Beer Diet Project is for me, is me understanding, you know, our gut microbiome and basically applying all of these things that I learned from fermentation into my gut. And, you know, again, just like in brewing is, okay, you got to clean and sanitize your equipment. Once you have that, all of that, then I started looking at, okay, if I have a clean slate, now I can go in and look at, you know, what do I want to grow, right? So if I eat sauerkraut, I know that I'm putting in that microbiome like a cabbage has an entire microbiome in itself so i'm putting in all of that in into my gut and i'm growing that right so that's one way that i'm doing that um ask yourself this question because if you understand that okay if sauerkraut is made from cabbage and cabbage other than salt you don't really need anything to ferment it which means all the bacteria that's in there it'll ferment and it'll turn to sauerkraut the question that i start asking myself was, you know, I used to eat a lot of brewery type of food, like pub food, which was um, pizza, wings, hamburgers, and stuff like that. And then I started asking myself, how does that food ferment? Okay, how does that break down? How does that digest? And, and then I started to realize, and that's when my aha came in. It's like, wow, like that's not really real food, at least not, not the way that they prepared because I start to ask myself, like, can you take something like, you know, food like pizza and actually make it be good? And the answer is yes, I believe that you can, but you have to start out with what's the grain that's being used. Okay. If you're using modern day grains, modern day grains, they don't have the same nutrients. Okay. They, they have, you know, the gluten in modern day grains is a way bigger, thicker, Franken food type of, um, you know, nutrient that our bodies can't break down. But if you go back to the heirloom versions like acorn, that's good food. That food can actually sprout and ferment and give you nutrients. So, and you can actually make, you know, fermented dough, which is called sourdough, right? So through the fermentation, you bring out the nutrients. You can actually have a healthy meal that way, but you don't find that kind of grain anywhere else. If you go out to eat pizza at any local restaurant, chances are that they're using modern day grains. Okay. There's very few people that seek out heirloom foods, right? And this is basically what I feel my mission is, is to share this message that you guys understand that, Hey, we are forgetting our traditional foods. We're forgetting where food comes from. We're forgetting what real food is. And now we're seeing, a, you know, this, this epidemic of people dealing with, weak immune systems because they're eating foods that are just not good for you foods that you know modern day food like i just believe that you know it's not good for you and most people just don't know the difference okay they've never been taught this i didn't know it right i learned this you know when i was 28 years old and going through all of these issues and then all of a sudden i had that epiphany and then i'm here now looking at the world i see what people eat and and i understand that hey I at one point used to eat all that food and I didn't think much of it. I thought that I was fine until I wasn't. And then I realized, wow, 
I know how it got to the point to where I got, I can trace everything back. It all makes total and complete sense. So now I'm doing things differently. I'm eating different foods and I'm experimenting and, and doing further research. And really my research is nothing more than just bringing me back to our old days, to our ancestors, to basically fermentation, right? So like one of my <clears throat> favorite books that I read is this one right here, Sacred and Herbal Healing and Medicinal Beers. You know, the secrets of ancient fermentation. This is basically a collection of what I will call true medicine, Okay, true medicine came from, from plants and through the process of fermentation. And this is where that quote says, let, you know, let thy food be thy medicine. <clears throat> um, let thy medicine be thy food and food be thy medicine by Hippocrates. This is basically where people understood that, hey, everything that you eat, okay, it's got to nourish you. It's got to clean you out. It's got to detox you. It's got to like actually help you. And most of the time now, most people, like some of the herbs that I use, like Ayurvedic herbs and things like that, most people don't take that unless they're sick, right? When in reality, they should be part of our diets. We just got to learn how to use them and use them properly. And, and I'm telling you, once everything breaks, it's hard to go into that, right? And so this is where I'm developing, um, you know, my, my method to basically help people who are serious about taking control of their health. If you understand everything that I just shared with you, it makes sense that, you know, the only way that you're going to fix any kind of hormone issues, any kind of gut related issues, you know, you probably, you guys probably saw all these, um, you know, posts and pictures, like my body broke out in hives at one point. And the reason why that happens is because when you have undigested protein, going into the body okay the the body the way that it, that it works is it scans the entire body and anytime there's a protein that the body didn't make it considers that protein an invader a foreign protein and it goes and attacks and that's what an allergic reaction is that's what an allergy is it's the body saying like oh i didn't make you let's try to break you down and then if it can't break you down it builds mucus around it and that's inflammation and, and that's seen in different ways, right? So like, you know, breaking out in hives, that was inflammation. Two thirds of my body was, you know, going through that. And that's because of all the antibodies that were released to try to get rid of some sort of undigested protein, which came from probably eating the wrong type of food, eating a protein that my body wasn't able to digest, not having the right probiotics, having the, you know, bad bacteria in my gut, a combination of all all of those things played a role, right? Now I look back and I say, I need to really do something with my gut because that's basically what's causing all of the other issues, right? If your body can't break down protein and turn those into amino acids, the body doesn't have the amino acids that it needs for simple functions like growing your hair, your skin, your nails, okay? Everything ties back to your microbiome and that's why I am so passionate about teaching you guys and trying to help you understand that the one thing that you got to do more than anything is focus on optimizing your microbiome. Okay. There is no other way. And really when I think of this, all that I'm really doing is, Hey, what I'm really teaching is how does the body work? Okay. I just showed you how life is created through the process of sprouting through the process of fermentation. And all it is, is just understanding that model and basically using everything, all the knowledge that I'm sharing with you for your own benefit. Okay. All the food that you eat, you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, is this going to help me grow or is this going to add toxic waste into my body? And I can tell you based on what I see, okay. From pretty much everyone that I talk to, most of you are eating foods that are toxic and you don't even know it. That's the sad part that you cannot tell the difference, right? And so I'm doing my best to show you and teach you, but you gotta learn, okay? You're gonna have to like go out and you're gonna, you're gonna make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't, you know, I mean, I had a bit of a download to where it all made sense and I was able to understand what is good food and what wasn't real food, but I can tell you right now that I'm still learning. I'm still finding different ways. I'm still improving. As a matter of fact, 
I'm going to be updating, um, you know, my training courses because I'm finding different, um, you know, better ways to go about, you know, doing the things that I do. And so optimizing your microbiome, for me, the formula is simple. You got to clean, you got to sanitize, then you got to add the right nutrients. And then you can start adding and growing in probiotics in your gut. I mean, that's about as simple as I can make the formula. And now there's different ways you're going to have to do that, like cleaning and detoxing. That's where things, that's where the challenge is because nobody knows what can be in your body. Nobody knows what kind of toxic waste is in your body and what you're going to be exposing yourself to when you're flushing out all of that toxicity. And, and all I can do is be there for you as a coach, as someone who has gone through the process, gone through the journey. And, you know, if I know of something that I see where I'm like, Hey, I've been through that. Here's what it was. That's the only way that I can point you and guide you. And, and that's one of the reasons why I am, you know, starting to put together programs where I'm working with people more closely one-on-one -on -one so that I can see what they're doing. So I can see what they're going through so that I can actually, you know, guide them through. But I can tell you that I'm, I'm not going to be working with people unless you go through the very basics. Okay. And the very basics is energy bootcamp is you got to learn how to get your body to produce energy. And you got to be at least at a point where you're able to somewhat identify bad foods and what are some good foods because then at that point we can start working on detoxing there's no point in detoxing if you don't do all the other stuff first because all the other stuff first is the reason why you're toxic to begin with so i hope that that helps you understand my overall method my overall system my overall process and what i'm doing here with uh with a beer diet project and and all i can say is that you know if you're if you're serious about taking care of your health all you have to do is, you know, follow what I put together for you in this group. Okay. Work on boosting your energy and, and then you're, that's going to basically get you to the point where now you can work, um, you know, with me more closely, um, because detoxing and optimizing your microbiome, again, I don't know if anyone else who teaches what I teach and, and, and I, and it makes me sad sometimes, you know, people go out and waste so much money on, professionals quote unquote that you know are trying to put them through whatever uh, protocol that they have and and when i look at it i just see like they're they're missing so much they're 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 just not they don't have that knowledge of fermentation they don't they don't they've never really grown probiotics and so they don't understand how the body um you know works and i've seen people spending you know three to five hundred dollars a month on, on this stuff. And it's sad because when you understand food and you understand what a real food is, you start using it, you're going to realize that you don't need supplements. Okay. Like my whole goal with this is to teach you about this, get you to a point where you don't ever need supplements, right? You need supplements to get started, right? You're going to need supplements to like, um, you know, boost your vitamin D levels. You're going to need some to clean, help you clean. But as you do more of it, the goal is to never have to use supplements again, right? And that's basically what my whole goal was when I was told that I was going to take hormones for the rest of my life. I didn't want to depend on that. Okay, that's not what I wanted. And so this is what I started doing. And I just realized like, hey, this is like, this just makes sense, right? And so now I'm sharing this as my journey. I just gave you the entire background history and moving forward, I'm just going to be trying out different things. I'm going to be, you know, coming up with my, my own recipes, my own ways of feeding the body based on what I think is going to be best for my microbiome. And that's what beer diet project is, is going to be. And, you know, it's, like I said, it's, it's not about healing, treating, curing, preventing any kind of disease. It's really about optimizing your microbiome to get more energy, sleep better and feel better. It's about learning how to improve your health and vitality. It's about learning and understanding how the body functions. So I hope that that made sense. And I'm excited that, you know, you guys are here. Um, you know, this is basically the last training that I'm doing for this 14 day, um, you know, challenge. And again, what I'm doing with these trainings is I'm trying to give you as much information and it's up to you to take that information, 
research it further, decide what you want to apply and what you don't want to apply. I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I do and why I do it. And it's up to you to, you know, decide like, Hey, this makes sense to me. Everything else that you've tried probably doesn't work. You probably know why it doesn't work. You know, I try to do my best to explain, you know, why other things don't work. And, and, and that's it. I just, I just wish that more people will participate and, and go through this because the things that I teach, honestly, like, come on, drink more water. It's so simple, right? It's so simple, but there's a lot of people that don't, don't do that. They don't see how water is going to help them. Whereas me, I'm like, water is like, you know, if I'm making beer, it's the most important ingredient in making beer. It has to be clean right? I don't use water that has chlorine or chloramines that affects yeast growth. Why would I drink water myself that has chlorine or chloramines, right? That's why I clean out my water. Minerals, right? So I use distilled water. And, and again, with the things that I do, you're going to hear people say like, oh, distilled water is not good for you. Well, distilled water is the cleanest water. Now I understand what they're saying. What they're saying is that distilled water has no minerals. And I get that, which is why I add minerals, right? That's why I give you guys the training on minerals, magnesium, solely salt, all the minerals. So I add minerals to, to water. As a brewer, that's what I did. I had to build my own water depending on the kind of beer style that I was brewing. If I was brewing a Pilsner, if it's a light beer, I need uh, you know more neutral pH water. Whereas if I'm brewing a dark beer, a stout, which is you know acidic grains, I need a more alkaline water, right? So I need to make sure that it has more carbonates, more minerals and things like that. I've learned how to play with water, which is how I'm able to play around with water myself, right? I do distilled water, I mineralize it, I do alkaline water, I do different drinks, I do um, you know, sometimes acidic drinks like kombucha, rye apple cider vinegar, right? There's uses for all of these things. And I, and I wish that I could just download all my information onto you so that you can just start doing it but you know you're going to have to just basically go through the trainings and that's you know that's what i'm doing is i'm structuring everything and building you guys up a little at a time because this, the amount of stuff that i've learned here i mean i've probably about 20 books on brewing beer one of them is so hard to read brewing thermodynamics and all kind of stuff like that you don't need to learn all that stuff okay i'm basically giving you the knowledge that i've learned and i'm packaging it in a way that you can understand it in layman's terms in a way that you can find it applicable to your health so my only request to everyone that's in this group is go through the information but start to apply it okay don't discount anything that i say even if it sounds small and simple, don't discount drinking water every day. Don't discount adding minerals to it. Okay. And, and know that you're, it's going to be a learning curve. Okay. You just got to get started one step at a time. If you try to implement everything that I do, guys, understand one thing, taking care of the body is work. Okay. It requires a lot of discipline. It requires a lot of knowledge. I stopped taking care of my health for a couple of years right? Because I felt better. I was at a point where I'm like, you know what? I just feel good. I'm just going to go, you know, eat whatever. And, you know, I think I'm fine. And guess what? <laughs> I started going back to where I, um, you know, to where I started. I started gaining weight again. I started to feel my skin getting dry, my, my hair, like not being, um, you know, not growing as thick and all that, all those things like basically started to come back. And that's when I realized like, no, I think I just got to, you know, make up my mind that I'm going to be a healthy person and create habits that are going to help me. And this was just about two years ago. Um, so yeah, it was about two years ago. And so two years ago, I had been doing all this stuff for about five years at the time. Two years ago, when I decided, you know what, I'm going to get back into this. I'm going to actually go full out and take care of my body again. I was overwhelmed. I was like, man, where do I start? Like, I remember all the things that I was doing. I was like fasting. I was doing the water. I was doing the minerals. I was doing the vitamin D. I was doing all these things. Even I was overwhelmed. And, and so that's why, like, you know, when I put together some of these programs, I took that experience into account and said, you know what? I got to start people out one, like a little step at a time, because if you try to implement everything that I do, it's way too much. And so I'm giving you literally the best of the best of the best. Okay. The energy jump circuit, which I'm going to be updating, by the way, okay, to make it even 
more, well, more effective, first of all. Um, but that energy jumpstart kit, I promise you, if you actually apply it, you're going to feel a difference in your energy levels. And I've explained in many different ways how it works. All you have to do is just that, is just apply it. So <clears throat> all that being said, that's what I wanted to share with you. Um, I hope that made sense as far as, you know, how I go about optimizing my microbiome. It's just a formula. You got to clean your body. You got to detox and you got to put in the right foods. I linked into uh, this video um, two resources for you. One of them is traditional cooking schools. And traditional cooking school uh, teaches you how to make food and prepare food using ancient, you know, what, um, what I will call ancient nutrition, uh, traditional pr preparation methods, which basically includes all things fermented, sprouted. And by doing so, you're going to learn about food quality. You're going to learn about sourcing out food. You're going to learn about what are the right, um, you know, what are the things to look at when you're, when you're looking for food, right? Just like I said, like cabbage, if you can't ferment that cabbage, it's not good for you, right? So just like that, there's other you know, foods in every area that you're going to look at. Dairy is one of the biggest ones, especially like anyone that wants to learn how to produce hormones, you better learn dairy because that's going to be your ticket out. All right. That's what I have found. It's the most effective thing, but I understand that if you have gut flora issues, you're not going to be able to digest dairy. So I'm not saying go drink dairy. What I'm saying is go fix your gut related issues and, and that's what I had to do, right? And how did I do it? I cleaned out, I detoxed, and then I started to add in probiotics to basically regrow and restructure my gut flora until I was able to consume dairy products. Again, now I don't consume dairy products every day. Um, I mean, if anything, I'll consume dairy products maybe three times a year, if that. Um, you know, mostly when I feel like, hey, I need a boost of, of hormones, then, then I'll go for it. Um, but the most important thing for me to know is that, that I can consume the products, which tells me that my gut microbiome has been optimized and that I'm, that I'm doing good in that respect. So, <clears throat> so check out that resource. And then the other resources on nutrient deficiencies and in the nutrient deficiencies, I talk about different foods and nutrients that your body needs and understand that these nutrients are not necessarily for you, for you. They're mostly for your gut microbiome. These are the nutrients that I know you your microbiome needs in order for it to be able to grow probiotics, right? So beef organs, blue green algae, they contain all of those nutrients that your body needs. Okay, so that's essentially how I've been optimizing my microbiome. There's more advanced stuff, you know, more advanced stuff will involve cleaning out the lymph system. More advanced stuff will involve managing stress, mindfulness, Right. If you guys haven't watched my video on anxiety inside of this group, I explain how that works, how your thinking can actually affect your microbiome. Your state of being affects your microbiome. That's more advanced. Okay, that's probably something that you won't do until after you, you know, take care of your gut. But then again, I can tell you that if you don't take care of the mind side, even if you fix your gut, you're still going to deal with anxiety and all of these weird emotions that you know we all tend to feel. I still feel them, right? It's just like health. You got to practice mindfulness. You got to practice controlling your, your mind, your state of being. And, 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 and this is all, you know, part of what I'm, what I'm looking to, to teach. Um, and, you know, I'm doing my best to break it down as much as I can. So thank you all who um, participate and who give me feedback. And especially those of you who are in my coaching program, because, it is thanks to you that I'm able to see what's needed and what I need to be teaching and breaking down and, 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 you know, doing a better job at, at explaining to uh, everyone else. So thank you guys for that. Um, the last thing I'll say is um, I'm excited. I just got invited to speak at a uh, summit and my topic's actually going to be on this on optimizing your microbiome. And uh, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I'll, be sharing more details, I guess, as, uh, as I learn and go about it. Um, but that's it. Um, thank you guys for being here. Christina, I see you're here. Thank you for being here. Uh, Michelle, were you on medication before you started doing this program? I, I never got on it. I 
that was my own decision, which by the way, what I do and what you decide to do, two totally different things, that's on you. Don't put that on me. This is why I share this as my journey. I cannot give you advice on that. Um, and, and you know, a reminder for everyone in the group, don't be asking those questions on this group. Okay, you need to ask that to a licensed practitioner. Okay, that's how it works. Um, just just don't do it it's it's bad for you it's bad for the person who may decide to give advice on that without a license that's that's not good so please don't don't ask those questions um <clears throat> and understand you know at the end of the day once you learn how the body works you don't even you don't you don't need to worry about that um lisa hello and christina thank you thank you thank you so much all right guys that is it for today Hope you guys got a ton of value from all of these trainings. Um, I'm gonna continue to show up. Go do the 30 day hydrate challenge. Start posting pictures, use it as accountability. Guys, there's no group out there like this. There is no group out there that's teaching the information that I'm teaching. There is no group out there that is creating this level of support and encouragement with all the tools that I'm making available to you guys. So take advantage of it, okay? Take advantage of it. I know how much money I've wasted myself on stuff that didn't work. And, and I've done my best to give you everything that you need so that if you are truly serious about making a change in your health, this is all you gotta do. Just follow the program, okay? Follow the program and that's it. Um, Christina hydration challenge is amazing a wonderful start thank you and, and you know Christina thank you so much for you know being so uh, engaging and, and participating I know that there's a lot of people who who have started even some that don't post anything um, I know that there's people who have started um, because they started seeing you so you know I truly appreciate it and I know that there's a lot of other people who also appreciate it um, but yeah, thank you everyone here who who does participate and engage. It's it's not just for you. Um, understand that you're going to inspire other people, and and this is this is the law of uh, reaping and sowing, right? What you give, you get back. If you give health to others, you get health back. Okay. Some people wonder, it's like, why are you teaching all this stuff and sharing this information? It's like, because the more I give, the more the universe, the more that God gives back to me, right? You got to learn to be a giving person. So when you share this stuff, okay, and not just in the group, but, you know, with your friends, with your family, you know, talk about your journey. Talk about like, hey, you know, I just start drinking more water. Wow, you can't believe he benefits the uh, health improvements that I've seen just on that. Trust me, when you start to share this information with others, you're giving health to others. Okay, when you share minerals with others, you're giving health to others. When you share vitamin D with others, you're giving health to others. When you're sharing all of these teachings that I'm giving to you, okay, pass that on because that's one way that you're going to get health back yourself. One of the best ways to learn is to teach. All right. So I hope that you guys got understood that concept. It's, it's a huge concept. Lisa, you just got your cutler oil today. That's awesome. Looking forward to feeling better. Um, me too. Please keep me posted on that. Um, Christina, uh, Michelle, do I continue taking the method? Again, I cannot give you that kind of advice. I, I can't. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a doctor. I'm not licensed to give you that advice. No one can tell you what to do. And honestly, that is, that is your responsibility. Um, I mean, the, the, there's basically two two schools of thought on that. One is some people need it, okay? And I don't know how to tell if you, if you really need it or not, right? I'm not trained on that. Doctors study disease and medication. I don't study any of that. I study health. I study what the body needs. And here's what I know. Whether you take meds or not, drinking more water, that's good for everyone raising your vitamin D levels, that's good for you either way, okay? Optimizing your microbiome, that's good for you either way, right? So all I can say is learn 
to identify what's not working for you. Okay, what isn't serving you? What are foods that aren't serving you? And what are foods that are going to start to help you? What are habits that are going to help you? And you got to learn to be intuitive. Okay, you got to learn to be intuitive. If you ask me, like, you know, off the record, like, the reason why I personally decided not to take hormones was because when I looked and researched at what's in there, I find so many things that are toxic to the body. And in my mind, I'm thinking, why am I going to be putting toxic stuff into my body? Right. And again, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm not telling you that, you know, anything like that. I'm just saying that in my mind, it just didn't make sense to go that route when my whole goal was to detox my body and optimize my microbiome. Okay. That's where, that's where I made that choice. And, and again, I don't know if I did the right choice or not. I mean, <laughs> looking back, I'm talking about eight years later. Yes, I know that I made the right choice for myself. Okay, not for everyone else. Okay, this is just for myself. Back then, I didn't know. Back then, I was scared. Back then, I didn't have all of this knowledge and experience. I was just like, I just knew that I just knew that I didn't want that. And I knew that I wanted to live a life where I had energy, where I had health, vitality, and I was able to do, um, you know, the things that I enjoy doing, um, you know, quick story. There were times where I would get, um, you know, I will stand up. And if I would stood up too fast, like I would, I, there's been times where like I black out. Right. And you, know, you get to a point where like, I'm disoriented. Like, I don't know what's going on and complete black my eyes are wide open, but I can't see a thing. Right. I got to those points. And I just realized like, hey, you know, like if that happens when I'm out hiking or, or like mountain biking, like that's not good. Like I don't enjoy doing those stuff, you know, those things because I'm always afraid that something like that is going to happen. And, and I knew that that's not what I wanted. And so I started to focus on what I truly wanted. And that's the reason why I just keep learning different ways to improve my health. And that's all I'm sharing with you. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you what I believe is the proper way to maintain your body, to fuel your body, to optimize your microbiome. And I believe that that's, you know, true health. I believe that that is what we should be teaching. Okay. I believe that that's really the way that, um, you know, it's not only good for you, but you're going to understand that as you start to understand what are real foods, what's good food. Those come from farming practices that are actually good for the environment. Okay, all the toxic food that you guys are eating that is making you feel the way that you are is coming from farms and farming practices that are toxic to the environment. And so you just have to look at it that way is if you're toxic and you continue the way that you're doing, understand that you're also creating toxicity for the entire world. So changing yourself is not just about you. It's about understanding our entire ecosystem. And that's what, this is one of the reasons why I teach this is because if if you guys don't learn, you know, we're, we're losing resources. We're losing some of these. And, and, and I think that through this education, you know, more people are now seeking out good food, right? Like I've shared, you know, the sources where I get the stuff from, um, you know, where I get my beef from those farmers are doing good things for the environment and we need to support them. Okay. So we need to buy more food from them so that they help our environment. Um, Go to your local farmer's market. Start getting involved with, you know, understanding and, you know, where your food comes from because everything all like 80% of your immune system, that's your gut health. That's not just your gut health. That's your overall health is your gut microbiome. And it's all related to food. Like that's really where everything starts. So <clears throat> yeah. Um, you're putting more toxins in your body. And, and again, that's something that you're going to have to navigate out of it. Um, all I can say is that, man, I mean, I'm, I'm detoxing. Like today I took a break because yesterday was way too aggressive for me. And, and I, I can tell you like, um, you know, toxins in the body, that's what creates headaches, dizziness, nausea, weakness. I mean, a lot of these feelings that I know I was going through, um, that's what it is. And when you're detoxing, you're moving those toxins around. That's, that's a rough terrain to, uh, to uh, navigate. And so again, the, the last thing that I want to do is put more toxic stuff into my body. And, and that's really the reason why I eat the way that I eat, right? If you follow my videos on my fan page, uh, right around August, September, um, I started doing green smoothies. 
and these green smoothies, like that's what I had every single day, the same exact stuff, right? I mean, part of it is, you know, I was researching because I know that whatever I eat, that's going to grow certain types of probiotics. And so I needed to understand and get a feel for what that was. Lately, same thing. My meals is the same exact thing pretty much every single night. It's, you know, I'm, I'm eating, you know, grass fed, grass finished um, beef with sauerkraut and avocados. Um, and then, um, the only variables there are sometimes I do uh, kombucha and then I have my, uh, you know, beef organs and I have, you know, a variety of them. Um, but it's basically the same thing every single day. Um, you know, my dad's a little bit more advanced. I'm only doing one meal a day right now, which is not something where you want to start, um, you know, with, and, um, <clears throat> and, but, you know, this is, this is, uh, I guess I'm, I'm, mostly just trying to be an example for you guys, you know, and showing you what's possible, showing you, you know, where, where, um, you know, where you can go, but don't compare yourself to me because I, I was not able to do this when I started. Okay. When, when I started, I, I had sugar cravings. I was hungry. As soon as I wake up, I wanted to eat. Um, I couldn't imagine skipping a meal. I couldn't imagine a meal without bread. Um, I mean, there's all these things that I started, but you just have to get started and just start to improve one thing at a time right? So 30 day challenge, start with that. That's one thing that you can start improving. Start with the quantity of water that you drink later on. You can start paying attention to the quality of the water that you drink. Um, you know, start paying attention to the uh, minerals, um, start paying attention to your, your, uh, vitamin D uh, levels. And with vitamin D, if you understand vitamin D, you start to understand food, you start to eliminate bad fats from your diet that block vitamin D absorption and start to incorporate good, healthy fats that actually help your body absorb vitamin D. And that starts to shape your diet. And as you start to shape your diet, naturally the foods that you're eating now are going to be not only not toxic, but actually healing and, you know, giving your body the nutrients that you truly need. And everything just starts to work out when you understand the overall principle that I'm, that I'm teaching here. Um, Christina's the fan page different from this one. Yes. So right now you guys are in the uh, Facebook group. If you guys go to the uh, fan page, um, there is a videos tab. And in that videos tab, I have a couple playlists. I have a playlist where I talk about, um, I did a seven day water fast. Again, that's advanced. Um, that's, you know, these are some of the things that I do to optimize my microbiome. By the way, um, I'm, I'm fine going a little bit later. If you guys, if you guys want me to keep talking, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with going a little bit later. Let me know in the comments if you guys want me to keep talking about the stuff that I do now and, you know, including some of the wild stuff like that video, um, those videos, you know, seven days, water only distilled water at that. Um, again, it's not something that you, that most people would, um, uh, would do. And it's not something that I recommend doing when you're first getting started. My first fast was actually a juice fast. And, you know, there's a difference, right? Because with juicing, you actually have some nourishment, you have some nutrients going into your body, um, with a distilled water fast only that's aggressive. Like that's cleaning out the body. That's starving out pretty much all the bad bacteria. And, and that's the beauty of fasting when you understand it and you understand probiotics. Probiotics can last a long time without food. Not only that, they clean house. Like they go and they start eating the bad bacteria. Okay. So fasting is an amazing tool when you learn to use it properly, but you have to prepare for it. And so I did that seven day water fast, right? So I documented every single day. I talked about, you know, what I was experiencing, what I was going through. Um, and, and, you know, just to, just to have it there, um, on my fan page, I have another playlist. That's a good one to watch. Um, I did a six week program. You know, this was, uh, I asked, was like, Hey, what topic do you want to know? I will teach it, do my best. And everyone started pointing out to hormones. They're like, Hey, can you, can you teach us how to produce hormones? So I created a hormone bootcamp program and basically over six weeks, I broke down the entire process. I, it's something that I had done, but, um, you know, it was the first time that I actually broke it down in a way that I could have people go through this process. It's actually kind of what led to all these programs that I'm creating now where it's like, okay, I understand that the first thing I had to do was help my body produce more energy, right? That's phase one. Phase two is detox and clean. Okay. You got to go detox and clean and restructure your gut flora. And then the phase three, is hormone production that's where you actually go feed your body 
you grow the, you know, you give your body the nutrients that it needs. And if you have the right probiotics, your body should produce hormones, right? And so those are the three phases. And the way that I was teaching it is you're always helping your body produce more energy. Like that's, that's the foundation. That's like learning to dribble in basketball. That's just, you know, you're learning like how to find balance. Detox is the hard work. And the way that I was teaching it was like, Hey, you got to detox, research your gut flora, and then go attempt to produce hormones. And if you fail, all that you do is you go back to detox, right? You're always producing energy, but you go back to detoxing, researching gut flora, and you attempt it again. And you just continue that process until your body basically builds itself up. What you are doing is just that, is you're, you're growing new cells. You are regrowing. You're learning to regenerate yourself. Um, one of my favorite books that it's a hard read. You know, this book on regenerate, um, if you notice this pattern is the same pattern that we find out in nature everywhere. And if you want to understand this pattern, this Fibonacci like, um, you know, some people will call it sacred ge geometry, ancient, um, you know, mathematics, um, you can look up vortex based mathematics and, and you're going to see how, how this is basically energy and life. And when you understand this, you're understanding what regeneration is about and regeneration is nothing more than understanding how energy is produced. Okay. If you know, some people ask me sometimes, like if you've had your thyroid removed, for example, the question is, can you regenerate your thyroid okay and I don't know the answer a hundred percent but I believe that if there is a possibility the only way that it's going to happen is by giving your body the nutrients that it needs by having the right microbiome because again just like that seed sprouted into a plant in a tree if you have anything in you that resembles a thyroid right if that little thing is to regenerate regenerate is nothing more than sprouting and growing okay if there's anything in there the only way that it's going to happen if it's all those conditions are there the right quality of water minerals proper ph temperature and the right probiotics okay that's how i that that's my viewpoint like i'm i'm, I'm sharing with you how i think and so I, I hope that it makes sense but that's basically how i see myself um regrowing hair that's regeneration right if your skin you know your skin basically falls off and you regenerate new skin the question is are you regenerating healthier or are you regenerating unhealthy all of that is going to matter um the difference is going to be in in, in in what your microbiome is doing and what's the environment in your body and it's a daily choice okay you're not going to find one pill this, this is what boggles me about you know, sometimes people think that they're going to find one pill and somehow that's going to fix everything else. Meanwhile, they're eating all of this toxic food. How, how are you supposed to fix that, right? How's that pill supposed to fix your bad eating habits? It's not, right? Once you wake up from that and you realize, right, you wake up from that and have that realization, it's like, okay, food is important. Let's learn about it. That's when everything changes for you. And it's, that's a split moment decision because all it takes is that, that understanding and then one day at a time, you make one improvement, you create one new habit, right? Start out with water, that's your first habit. Second habit could be, what, what are you eating first thing in the morning? What's your breakfast, right? Make breakfast, you know, be, be more conscious about what you're eating for breakfast, right? Don't worry about lunch and dinner yet, just one thing at a time and make little improvements. And as you start making little improvements over time, they compound and, and that's, that's, how I, that's how I got to where I'm at, okay? So I hope, I hope that, uh, you know, all of this stuff is making sense, but, um, all right, I think I'm going to go now. Um, thank you guys for being here and kind of sad that the uh, 14 day, uh, training is uh, over, but I'll be, I'll be, I'll be back and I'll be doing more, uh, more trainings, although I am going to be focusing on this, uh, summit, but please continue to post in the group, continue to encourage one another. And I look forward to following 
uh, new journeys. We've got a lot of people that have been joining recently and you know, I'm excited for each and every one of you. And you know, I'm here, so if you guys have any uh, you know, questions, need extra guidance, um, you know, I do my best to get back to uh, everyone. So that's it. Thank you guys for being here again. And I'm going to go now. You guys later.